<laughs> so, uh, okay, uh, okay, I'll press the wrong button, I'll press the wrong button, but, uh, so, uh, <laughs> I know this is pretty much not the, uh, the, the uh, good type of video to make at this time being, but hey, nothing I can do for the time being, I got myself the, the mini M16 at hand, or submachine gun, as some may want to call it. There's a lot of white noise into my ears right now, and by far we, uh, we're uh, gonna do ourselves some more reactions. Again, by far I should not, uh, I held this thing. I'm on antenna here, but alright. So, uh, we're gonna hear, we're gonna hear, watch your. Shut up, you bastard! Fuck's sake! Right, but, uh, hold on a sec, let me, uh. Mmm, never mind. Or. Yeah, better. Better. Mmm. <laughs> Okay, okay. So, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. I just uh, got cut off, cut off guard, and uh, I... uh. <laughs> 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 sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, I was, uh, watching some YouTube poop around here, and, uh, well, uh, <laughs> well, I've came across some things, and, <laughs> I mean, I'm far from, I'm far from already being sane and whatnot, but, uh, <laughs> let me switch out to the desktop mode so you can see what am I seeing, why am I laughing so much. So by far, this is what I what I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah, don't, just ignore the other things here. Uh, just a historical uh, jokes. It triggers O'Hare. Uh, she's. Mhm. Mm uh, <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> okay. Okay. There's a lot of white, it's just purely white noise in my ear. I love it. Uh, okay. Mm. Let it grow, but instead of grow, it's replaced. I don't know, say shit. <laughs> uh, okay, so I finally now. Shut up, you bastard. Shut up. There you go. Now, thing is, uh. Uh. <laughs> Right, that's just I'm just closing all this stuff here because I know we, we won't be needing it. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, the main thing is here we're gonna be a little bit sadistic and keep on watching uh, some guys do some you know some interesting stuff, science and whatnot. But even though we're a good guy, BigLive.com. This is a one second. There we go. My uh, headset just had to let's say go a bit, get back to normal. So uh, one second, Let, let's play here to uh, what a methylated tastes like and of course he's not gonna drink it of course but he's gonna just spit out all right let's go this is a common household solvent that we have in the uk called methylated spirit also known as denatured alcohol and this is what uh, wikipedia says about that mm -hmm. it says denatured alcohol also called methylated spirit or denatured rectified spirit is ethanol which is the drinking alcohol that has additives to make ethanol. it poisonous Ooh. somewhat bad tasting foul smelling or nauseating to discourage recreational consumption in some cases it has also died in our case it's always this lovely it's not actually showing up in the ipad very well but it's it's a deep purple color it's quite a pleasing color in its own right oh indeed it is i mean it's quite beautiful but again uh, the main reason that I, that they put, let's say, purple, would mostly just say that that thing would be pure evil in a way because, uh, drink it, <laughs> you're most likely going to be fucked. But yeah. However, the main thing is that it's typically round about 90% uh, ethanol, 10% methanol, which is the toxic alcohol that makes you blind. Mm, see? That's the difference between, between ethanol and methanol. Methanol will, uh, you know, affect your eyesight and, and so on, while ethanol is the drinking one, without any problem. Alright, thankfully, uh, thankfully my big fat, uh, green, so, I mean, uh, webcam is covering that, alright, good. Uh, and the whole reason for that, the whole reason they won't sell the pure ethanol, 
is because people would then be able to get cheap ethanol and they wouldn't need to buy expensive vodka that is taxed up to the hilt. So the point of this video is just how unpleasant tasting is methylated spirit and I'm not going to swallow it. I'm going to spit it out. I'm not, I hope I'm not going to swallow it. If I do swallow it accidentally, the cure is going to have to be lots and lots of ethanol in the form of vodka, which is not good. Oh, oh man. So, in so I see like a... If you drink uh, methylated spirits, the only way to save yourself is to get drunk. So how do we how do we know if you get drunk enough or or what? <laughs> I don't know. I honestly don't know. But but yeah, let's get a move on. Let's see what else uh, would this uh, extend to? Going to make for a very nice night at all. Uh, I'm not going to swallow it though. I, it's just do not ever again. drink this. It's just you know. It really, they have deliberately made it poisonous. And one of the th other things they add include, apparently, isopropyl alcohol, which is bad news, acetone, which is Ooh. bad news, methyl ethyl ketone, which is also... If you're okay, in case you're ever wondering, what is uh, acetone? It's like this, the, the thing you use to, let's say, paint the fingernails and whatnot, but... Eh, it involves different methods, with or without acetone. That's just one of many different methods. <sighs> but yeah, let's, let's get a move on. Shit, can, I can't. Okay, why can't, why can't I get myself a good. <laughs> Never mind. I can't get myself a good, a uh, decent uh, sight here with uh, with the M16 at hand, but alright. No bad news. Methyl isobutyl, aldehyde, all ketone, and denatonium. Now, denatonium is a, a chemical which uh, is often called bitrex and Ooh. is really unbearably bitter in parts of 10 parts per million. So, um. But yeah. I mean, uh. By the name of Bitrex, you are, you are, it's already, you know, the uh, obvious that if you hear the, I mean, the first name, or the first time the name Bitrex, it's obviously going to believe that it would, def it, most, it, it would most likely be, uh, you know, something to bitter taste and whatnot, but the thing is, is it poisonous as well? That's the thing to ask. Oh, oh wow. I think that that thing that thing apart from that say purple, I mean that showed uh, how evil it is. It really is evil by itself. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's really designed so that you cannot get the ethanol back out of it. You know, it really Ooh. is contaminated deliberately to make it un unviable. So anyway, on with the experiment. I want to know just how unpleasant. This is going to taste. Do not try this yourself. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that. Do not try this stuff at them because this would definitely most. This would definitely be a very very bad idea. Mechanism of methanol poisoning because there is methanol in this is that it it converts to an acid in your bloodstream that attacks optic nerves and makes you go blind. Well, yeah, and true. The big. Well, yeah, true. I mean, uh, there's a, there's something that I just remembered. During World War One and sometimes even World War Two, uh, you do you know what was the point of mustard gas? Because of course our our lungs here they uh, contain water. So if we don't have a gas mask and you know a bomb of mustard gas just falls down, we breathe in the gas. What happens? We inhale it. The uh, mustard gas goes here. It gets in contact with the water of our you know of our, of our body, and then it becomes acid. Which, the, I mean, the big thing of methanol as well, too. Which also means that, uh, oh, gee, that's, yeah, it's quite scary, too, you know, to, you know, imagine the way how it affects you. But, all right. But, yeah, do not do that. In case, if, you, if, you, if you're really going to do it, stop it. Just stop it. Really bad idea. Scare thing about the methanol. During Prohibition, uh, people did cut methanol. They were basically selling this uh, as liquor. And people were drinking large quantities of methanol and they were going blind. And without even knowing that it was ethanol. So, yeah, I mean, it's funny about the, uh, the Prohibition era was literally a death... I mean, I don't know how to say this here because literally... Yeah, m uh, methanol being... Cheaply produced and illegally sold around. I mean, that's that was of course just asking for. It was just asking for that to happen. 
literally. But yeah. So uh, I, I'm not going to drink. Well, I'm not going to drink any. I'm going to put it in my mouth. Oh, that's far too much. Might as well do the test properly. Oh wow. This isn't going to end well, is it? I'm not actually looking forward to this. No, I have a yeah. horrible feeling it's going to be repulsive. <sighs> Are we ready? No. Right. No, we're not. Oh, the poor man. <laughs> feels like it's burning the tongue it's like really bitter fucking hell <laughs> that is horrible <laughs> oh, jesus i'm not gonna taste anything for a while now <coughs> mm, mm, mm. oh like you said again better drink uh so it's best to drink a uh, vodka i'd say wow oh. okay the taste Mm. How was it like? Uh, the first thing that hit me was a solvent taste, like when you accidentally, you know, you get solvents in your hand, then they get into your mouth. You like biting your fingernails or something, and suddenly you get this solvent in your mouth, and it just tastes horrible. That happened to taste. me. Oh god, that's disgusting. And then the solvent taste goes to that bitrex, but really, they have God knows how much they add to that. That is just the whole mouth just tastes bitter now. <laughs> That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, again, as uh, like, you know, learned the biology that, uh, uh, no, it's actually within history, believe it or not, that, uh, when something is bitter in our mouth, I mean, it's just a bodily response that, uh, we need to spit it out because, uh, it's actually, well, I mean, it's, uh, it's a, it's, I mean, it's a natural reaction of, you know, let's say, uh, Drink olive oil because it would to our tongue would come as poisonous, so the response would be bitter. So to generate the response, that we would spit it out. So it's a bit of a self-protection mechanism. Come to think about it. Oh Jesus! I wish I hadn't done that now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they really don't want you to drink methylated spirits. They make it poisonous and they make it taste absolutely disgusting. So um. Yes, that was worth doing. So yeah, <laughs> uh, stick to vodka or or moonshine or whatever you can get, because uh, much better option in the long run. Oh, indeed, most likely. And if that, if and if uh, if that him, then he, yeah. Oh, look at that! He looks like a pirate. Make your own simple and cheap. Hmm. Well, I'll have to I'll have to see about that because you know. Got myself this here, but I mean, it could be interesting to do some home brewed stuff, but again, not really that necessary. But I mean, if you really don't trust anyone, so I guess someone who would be paranoid just buy the damn thing and just come in, just make your own. Wait, Poundland dummy CCTV camera. Oh, yeah, I actually bought myself one of those as a bit of a toy and I gave it to my father. So, yeah, uh. Okay, so what else we got? Tattoo machine teardown. Super gay pink <laughs> death lights. <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm kind of tempted to see which one here is going to be the best. Well, yeah, I mean uh, this guy here from Scotland. I mean that's uh, some very interesting stuff. Now we see about the super gay pink LED death lights. This video is about. Dangerous LED lights from China uh, available on eBay. Mm. Now these ones are really attractive. I like these I'm not sure how it will show up on the camera I think they'll probably come out as a dull blue in the camera, but in reality these are vibrant sort of Barbie pink color mm. Which is probably a blue LED with a red phosphor on it uh, to give that color uh, These came from a eBay seller called Banggood and cost a total of three pounds 59 including shipping which is a uh, for 100 LEDs, that's really cheap. Now let's take a wee look at the controller. I'll just unplug these before you all have an epileptic fit. <laughs> the controller is one of these little 
clicky box controllers. Um, it's operating in this instance at 240 volts, so Ooh. it's not good news at all that you can just pull the back cover off exposing e. 240 volt <coughs> AC oh, and man. Uh, rectified 240 volt DC on these connections. The front of the controller also pops off quite easily. Oh man! And inside is one of those little cob chip surface mount. Uh, well, surface mount. It's the it's the chip that's uh, mounted direct to a circuit board, and then a blob of resin covers it. There are two thyristors that output uh, a power supply circuitry consisting of the bridge rectifier that rectifies the whole mains input, a resistor to limit the current to this little chip here, um, and a capacitor to smooth it, and then a reference resistor for monitoring the waveform for controlling the firing point in the thyristors. Very basic. Huh. Oh, and the button, of course. Uh, very basic, very typical controller of this type, but not at all safe because the way it's packaged. Hmm. Now, the strip. Well, about that again, <clears throat> the controller again, since the parts can be really, really that dangerous. So, I mean, come to think about it, if I had myself one of those, well, if I had, if I had myself your super glue by now, it would, let's say. I would look around to whatever, let's say, openings, I would find a controller, and I would glue the motherfucker shut, no matter what. But yeah, so, uh, let's see what else uh, happens. Shit, it's a little bit more complicated than the... Okay. resistors, this is a string of 100 LEDs, and it's divided into two circuits of 50, and the first 10... Uh, LEDs have a tiny little resistor built in. It's oh. 3K. And if you do the maths, it's uh, 5 3K resistors per section of the two uh, strings of 50, giving up the 100 LEDs. So that's 15K. And if you think 50 LEDs, typically a forward voltage of about 3 volts is 150 volts. Uh, from 240 volt mains, that's 90 volts to drop. Uh, 90 volts divided by 15k gives about 6 milliamps current, which is good. That's very good. That's that's running the LEDs. We're under running them, actually. They're going to last a good long time at that. Uh, 6 milliamps times 90 volt means a total dissipation across the five resistors is half a watt, which is only a tenth of a watt per resistor, which is actually well within the rating of these little 8th watt sized resistors. That's unusual for China. Um, I've had sets before that kind of went that went ugh, up in smoke, really, when the, the lights were just left on continuously. Um, the resistors went black, smoke came out, and little holes appeared in heat shrink, exposing live metal. Lovely. But these ones didn't do that. However, getting on to safety, <laughs> this is typical British fairy light wire. I should mention that uh, we in, in the UK Call Christmas lights fairy lights. It's just a it's a, just a British traditional <laughs> name. So our wire has two layers of insulation. It's got the fairy outer, light. the white inner, and then a fairly decent thick uh, copper. Um, that goes into a holder normally. Oh. I know this isn't exactly the same as LED. It's the tungsten lamp holder. Oh. Um, but it's got a wire grip, and when it's pushed in, it grips the wire really tightly, uh, which you know, that's safe, it's very hard to pull the LEDs off. Now, let's compare that to, and let's see if I can even find it. Yeah, I've lost a bit of wire, but not to worry. This <laughs> wire is single insulated, and it's really fine inside, absolutely super micro fine. And to give you an idea of how badly these things grip, th they've got heat shrink, and that's all that's actually holding that LED in is the solder and the heat shrink. And if I just grab a, another set here that I've already started stripping to bits, and I just <laughs> grab the LED and the wire and pull, it <laughs> just comes off. It really easily just pulls out. You can just go along and pull them off like that. And when you do, it exposes live uh, bare cables sticking out then, just one or two strands, but that's enough to kill. Uh, so really not safe for having around children or anything like that. Uh -uh. No. You can, however, use these for the LEDs and it's totally worth buying them for this. These LEDs have the concave lens on them, which is, you, it's very hard finding these LEDs other than in Christmas lights. 
the lens is such that it actually reflects uh, the dot of light. Well, I'll show you. I'll cut one of them out. So I'm just going to take a stand knife and I'm going to slit the heat shrink and pull the LED out. And inside is a little H-shaped piece of plastic which uh, is designed to uh, keep the wires apart inside and uh, support them uh, against the heat shrink. And it's when you cut the soldered connections off the bottom, it still leaves a good, typically in these sets anyway, 10 millimeters of bare lead, which is good of, of a pin. Uh, that's roughly about oh. three eighths of an inch for those who are working in pyro measurements. And I'll stick this LED, this is a warm wet LED, and I'll stick it into this tester. And you'll see that it's actually got a really wide viewing angle. You know, it doesn't matter what direction you view it from you can see the light from it. Uh, and these, these LEDs are great. And if you consider you're getting 100 LEDs for £3.59 or less, then it's totally worth getting them just to strip these LEDs out because they, they look great in your own lighting projects. And you can also swap them into solar lights to give a wider beam pattern um, and uh, the colour of your choice. So, uh. Uh, yeah. Good for stripping, but really, really not safe for general, actual in usage use in their intended manner. Because if there are kids playing with them, there really is a risk of electrocution. So strictly for stripping and for people who like dangerous stuff, <coughs> danger bears. Yeah, I mean, uh, come think about it. No, that's quite an interesting. What the fuck am I seeing? Extraordinary people that exist in the past. All right, uh, but yeah, then again, uh, that's quite interesting actually because I was thinking about it. Maybe uh, I'll get it, and maybe if uh, let's say the LED lights do pop around the computer, or just really, really, really building a computer ever since from scratch, people do do definitely know exactly. How to do it? I'm about that and everything. So, I mean, maybe that's also an interesting idea. Or, what are you saying else that I would need some LED lights? But yeah, I guess we should also continue on with our sadistic, uh, yeah, or sadistic experiments on people. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. Let's see what else do these guys have around here. Oh, well, yeah. Look at that. This is the uh. The arc lighter, but hey, that I will leave to you to watch because, well, we already w watched, let's say, two bit of this guy. It looks pretty damn amazing. But yeah, so, uh, one second, I gotta, let's say, stop this recording a bit here so I can, uh, uh <clears throat> get out of stuff to so some, some other good stuff to go for. Right, so, again, my favorite philosopher of all YouTube, Sar uh, Sargon of Akkad. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh. Ooh. Oh. Huh? The ideological root of Black Lives Matter. Hmm. You can say too much about that movement because you know it couldn't be quite dangerous, but. You heard that, right? I remain very, very skeptical about this, but I'm doing some strange noises. Oh. Okay. There was that. That was quite awkward, but uh, that happened. I mean, uh, of course, I I got here with my M16, like. There might be some home invasion. There might be some uh, nah, home invasion in progress. I must. I must protect. I must protect my subscribers. There's no one stealing my subscribers away. Oh, I hold, hold like this. Yeah, this thing's really tiny. I can't. Well. Uh. Well. I can always hold it like with my hammerbarrera like this, but this is here for let's say longer distance, longer distance shooting, like a. Oh yeah, then again, pistol. 
Yes, yeah, so then again, like, there's like a home invasion around here. They're trying to steal my subscribers. I won't let them. I will let them. <laughs> but yeah, so. Now, before my, uh, micro, before my, uh, headset decides to say plain white noise all over me, I just gotta move on. Okay, I see how it is. Hello, everyone. Welcome to This Week in Stupid for the 8th of January 2017, the first This Week in Stupid of the year. And we get to start the year on a high note as the BBC release a comedy sketch called The Real Housewives of Isis Ooh. and are obviously heavily criticised for this insensitive new sketch. Oh boy. I can't play the clip due to copyright issues, oh, but yeah. there's a link in the description if you Definitely. want to go see it, and I recommend you do because it's really funny. It's actually genuinely funny. And so I'm not surprised whatsoever that a bunch of moralising busybodies got their panties in a bunch. So Revolting's Real Housewives of Isis skit, based on the popular... So, <clears throat> about yesterday, uh, let's say, two, I mean, a group of regressive leftists on my, on my, uh, let's say, uh, art, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, which one was it again? Uh, um, I cannot say it, I, I won't say it again, but again, just know that on my art profile, there was, let's say, a bunch of re regressive, brain-dead, left-wing <sighs> buffoons. They literally got me, let's say, attacked over some time. I mean, I, of course, I got myself a bit of drama to share it around, but the uh, thing is that, uh, oh boy, the thing is that uh, I, unfortunately, I can't, uh, let's say, keep on posting the comments anymore. The people that did kept on, let's say, uh, well, talking shit to me, apparently, uh, even if it wasn't by those, let's say, terms of agreement that, you know, the site has already put on, I mean... <clears throat> I would, of course, be happily posting out the hate comments, say, Oh, you fool, you did your eyes, your lines are so thick. You must have, uh, traced it all. I mean, and now again, another first bit of a side, a bit of a side notice. Bitch, I like having thick line for drawing. If you don't like a problem, take this M16 and shove it up where the sun doesn't shine. Actually, no, because... Uh, who knows what this thing has inside. I got it off, let's say, very cheaply, so... Might be a little bit of lead inside, you know, or... Magnesium! <laughs> but no, actually. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, then again, uh... I know, I know a bit of a, I've done a bit of a, a personal note again, uh... <clears throat> posting those, uh, hate comments... Or exposing them, uh, I mean, I have to admit, like, it was fun. I mean, it was fun, but... You know, I got myself a strike for that, and it's, it, I mean, the the site is pretty much like YouTube itself. But unlike me, I just got myself, <laughs> fuck, fuck me, I say, I got myself a fucking strike. And the, and the best part is, the fucking thing won't go away, so hooray. <sighs> I mean, I always been the rightsy dightsy one all the time, but hey, it looks like I'm in the wrong this time. But, but yeah, then again, I just wanted to keep my, say, my, my watchers entertained. I mean, that was a point I was, but... Again, if they're gonna be, let's say, some brain-dead, left-wing, regressive buffoons... So... That always gets in the way of everything, I mean... Then again... Nah, I mean, I'll come to, I'll come to, th to think about it later, because for one, uh... Well... I don't know. Then again, people, instead of, because then again, uh, even on my profiles, uh, I do give them, let's say, the, let's say, the warm welcoming of, I mean, something's wrong, I mean, sure, sure, I mean, I know, some, something's wrong, come here, sit, sit next to me, so, uh, so, what, what was the case, I mean, what, what's wrong, what, what, what would I do, and what are the possible solutions that we can come up with it, but do you know what I get, I always get like, no, Fuck you, you, you stupid white, mmm, you stupid white, mmm, you, you get it, but, shit, oh, Jesus Christ, I mean, the things I'm always insulted by, even though I admit that, sometimes I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't show around, but sometimes even people say quite, people say quite the racist stuff at me, when I'm trying to, let's say, work out, let's say, a bit of, a bit of the, uh, 
let's say, resolution of what you come up with. Let's say, oh, I didn't credit, I credit, let's say, another artist for the base I used. No problem. I could just grab the link and just put it in the, in the description. Easy peasy. But no. <laughs> but fucking no. People just have to lose your shit on me. Well, anyway, let's get a move on. The US television model recently exported to Britain features actors dressed as brides of ISIL fighters taking selfies and showing off suicide belts. Oh, jeez. The humor in this comes from the <laughs> juxtaposition of general British attitudes and the context in which they would be found under the Islamic State. So the women are complaining that the suicide belts make them look fat and things like that. The humor is only funny if you look down on someone else and enjoy seeing them unhappy because they are not white and Christian is a bizarre criticism of this. Wow. Because this is actually a... Bro, that's dark. <laughs> that's really dark. Commentary on how British Muslims are so different to Middle Eastern Muslims. They have a totally different set of priorities, a very British set of priorities, and that's what's being highlighted. And of course, the joke that this isn't exactly how it was how it was described when I was groomed in a chat room, as in. There's no point going over to ISIS because it's certainly no better than where you are. Another wrote, I'm mortified that the BBC had produced such a program. This is simply bad taste. The fact that it is a comedy makes it even more worrying that humour should be associated with the actions of ISIS. Now, again, I have to pause the video again here repeatedly, but... <sighs> you incest, you oversensitive piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, in the past, again, before 2010, we always con we always were concerned about people being so extremely insensitive. Now, past 2010, and now we have people being oversensitive, left and right, everywhere. You can't say or anything. Some things, it's like, uh, you know, comparing the two genders with the Twin Towers. It used to be two, now it's a very sensitive topic. And that, of course, is dark humor, too. So, again, LTL, learn to laugh. Fucking Christ. Yes, humor is a coping mechanism. This is, in fact, one of the reasons that many historians tend to say that the British actually coped better with the trenches than their opposition is because they could make dark jokes about their situation. See? See what I mean about dark jokes? Um, on how... Beneficial they are. Fucking hell. Then we have these oversensitive. <laughs> what part of yourself did you leave at kindergarten? But yeah, then again, like a dark humor, that stuff again, like you, you should be laughing at it. Again, like again, not all topic is gonna be really, really good. Sometimes if terrorism, if let's say making dark jokes for terrorism, that'd be good. So try other things. But keep it to yourself and to whoever, let's say, you're telling it to. Because uh, then again, they always have, let's say, oversensitive over uh, bosses all over the place. Even though they can be our friends, but hey, what can we do? Sometimes, like, uh, if we can, let's say, work up to a certain manner, maybe from friends, they can become best friends. And you'll be thankful, and you'll be thankful for that. Uh, in case that ever becomes real one day, and... Uh, Oh, look at that. Apparently there's something there's something mistaken here at this point. Oh uh, no, never mind. It's good, it's good. I just thought I mean that the uh the screen here up there like uh would be let's say something missing, but never mind. It's it's good, it's good. In fact, a, a lot of British comedy comes from very dark situations that people have found themselves in and have had to use humor in which to cope. It's entirely healthy to do so. And what annoys me more about this is that the idea of it is to dissuade people from traveling out to join ISIS. It's very obvious <laughs> that the whole point of the satire is to say, look, going over to ISIS is, is awful. The people there are terrible, they are oppressive, and the, the, the actual material conditions of the, the state you'd be in is, are poor. You would be drastically decreasing your own standard of living by doing this. And the thing is, I mean, they're right. I mean, despite the fact that, yeah, at some point they might use, let's see, some offensive stuff and whatnot, but, uh, 
I mean, uh, <clears throat> well, we can always do recommendations, but we can't. We can never, let's say, guide people to their choice and whatnot. I mean, they, if they want to, let's say, to do whatever idiot, it, do whatever idiotic stuff they want to do, fucking do it. I mean, it's one. It's one way of, let's say, increasing life uh, quality for those who matters. <laughs> Oh man, <clears throat> but yeah. Mm. Oh, one second. Mm. Well, then again, though, something just to be laughed at, to en to enjoy and whatnot. Because then again, if you believe that, uh, let's say, making dark dark jokes about, let's say, uh, ISIS is is, is, is let's say, in unfunny, <laughs> tell that to them because you know why. Because even though, let's say, I mean, I don't know, World War One, World War Two, every faction was making dark jokes about everyone, no matter what. Even so, even though allied to allied or enemy to enemy, enemy to allied and allied to enemy doesn't matter. There was that can go. Let's say uh, it's a free way that it can go anywhere. Even let's say that, uh, ooh, the French people they drink too much wine. They're so rude. Oh, the the British people they drink too much tea and and the English too much. What else? Oh, the Americans they eat so many burgers and fart all day long. I mean, that's that's just an just just a really shitty example. But hey, it's a thing. I mean, I'm not let's say bring this up. I mean, I'm just showing to you what's really there. But yeah, then again. Another disappointing thing, like, uh, again, on, on a personal note, that uh, no matter how many times I had to repeat myself, some people are just at the point of level to, to believe that, uh, to make me believe that they were brainwashed. No matter how many times, just repeat them, to repeat the, the same information that they would never understand or process their right, let's say, reaction to it. Oh yeah, let's gotta move on. To go and live under a murderous Islamic theocracy. So yes, we are going to mock the idiots who thought that might be a good idea. It's obviously... Mock the idiots who decide to join them. Because, hey, uh, because come to think about it, uh, let's say... Let's think of, it, let's think of it, a bit of a good situation again. Uh, uh, oh yeah, so then again, uh, you see this, uh, let's say, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a salesman. And I'm selling to you this, uh, this, this M16. It pierces through armor with just the world's smallest bullets. Again, then again, uh, you would have to pay with to me like all your money, like simply all your money. You buy the damn damn weapon expensively, and then you go in the battlefield. But when you get like uh, you you expect to let's say shoot the enemy, but you just hear this this thing just uh, just tapping everything. I'm shooting at a tank. Why am why isn't it why is, is it not blowing up? Simple. You just fell for it like a dumbass. And again, like, uh, if people were to, let's say, if many would just jump off a bridge and would just follow it, believe it or not, it's a bit of, let's say, an idiotic way of putting it, but uh, when you do, let's say, pull out the bananas from your ears and pull the, uh, well, the sheet of skin that cover your eyes up, when you pull it up, then you, you, then you see that, yes, there is quite an alarming rate of people that do jump off the bridge. And yes, by intention. Then again, I'm, I'm at the point again that I'm not, that I shouldn't be surprised at it. And no, I'm not surprised at all. Despite the fact that I stopped giving a fuck anyways. Be <laughs> not. And this kind of like sanctimonious fucking moralizing just pisses me off. It's a joke. And it's actually a good one. But this one was my favorite. You are utterly abhorrent, BBC. You are going oh. to joke about. Yes, of course. I also forgot about one thing. Uh, let's just do uh, get rid of this uh, download tab here because it's just getting away with everything here. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, then again, like uh, uh, man. <clears throat> I'm just getting I'm just getting ready to say this one because uh 
believe it or not, let's say you remember that time, let's say where you where you went at a kindergarten, and you would say make jokes. Let's say, why oh, why did the chicken cross the road? And then someone would say something very cliche, of course, at the uh, at the child at the let's say the age of kindergarten, you would be laughing a lot. But believe it or not, there would be some who would be offended. <laughs> and not just because of offended, offended. Because offended, just because they wanted to. And waste not just our precious time, but so on with become the utmost idiotic bullshit I've ever seen. Mass rape too? Or the use of children as suicide bombers? Or make light of your role in promoting extremism to de deceived and abused women? Sick. You are truly sick in the head and morally bankrupt. Well, then again, it's people like this here that, uh, <laughs> that let's say, encourage this type of, in, let's say, uh, yeah, behavior. And because sometimes I always think of, say, of a better term, but sometimes I just uh, have, have to judge what would be a better, ter or a better term to use. And he has to do judge. Hmm. Deal with it. Or like, uh, oh, yeah. One second. Ah, uh, man. Right. This might, this might be a bit of idio idiotic, see, but... Well, idiotic stuff, but hey. I deal with it. Fuck me. Deal with it. <laughs> and yes, I know I just put it the very cheap... Uh, a very, uh, let's say, cheap way and whatnot. But hey. All, it, all that matters is, you know, your laughter. That's what matters the most. But uh, again, low moral, low, low standards, and everything. I mean, of course, they have, a, they do have a point still that uh, we are <laughs> morally sick and bankrupt, as it was says here. Because, well, for one point, that's true. But to again, another. Uh, another perspective they are also morally bankrupt too as well because literally if you can't take let's say the have the guts to take a joke or laugh or even walk away if you're offended then why the fucking hell then why the fucking hell would you spend some time to write this shit that's what i want to know if you're if you're so morally poor, instead of just walk, you just prove yourself to be how to be extremely morally bankrupt. But instead of just walking away, you decide to let's say write a freaking post about nothing, absolutely nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's it's funny. It's um, it's funny. Ah man, but yeah, it's like uh, let's say, you know what? You see here. I mean, I know here I can I can go through the wall. I mean, look at this. See, I'm going through a wall. It's cool, isn't it? But no, it's actually the point where it's just it's bullshit. <laughs> yes, I mean, everyone is morally is morally bankrupt. Everyone is morally sick. We are all, we are, let's see, we have reached certain forms of moral diseases that I couldn't uh, start, uh, start I, I don't know which one to start cataloging to. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it would be better to condemn the ideology that these people are following when they go to the Islamic State and become child suicide bombers hmm. or abusing women or whatnot. But no, instead you vent your anger on a parody of these things, on a way of coping with these things, on a way of highlighting that they are bad things, that they are obviously incompatible with secular moral values, and it takes a religious ideology. Well, <laughs> he also got, he's got a point too, because you know instead of doing let's say the best thing of wait, oh gee, that doesn't that doesn't sound good. Oh yeah, instead of, let's say, doing, let's say, a bit of, let's say, what, what most YouTubers would do, let's say, get a webcam, I mean, uh, let's say, 
just uh, remove your remove your glasses if you even wear them. I mean, it would just be at this point. I'm starting to feel like it would be better off if you just like uh, if just put on the sunglasses, get a webcam, start recording, and then you start venting out your anger on how bad this will be and how people should follow your uh your point of view because you were right and and nobody else and and this and that. Then again, are you team star as well too? Because hey, I know it's pretty much a dead meme, but that that. But then again, uh, he also it's the. Well, yeah, but then again, uh, team star over the time has you know become a a good example. I mean, of a person of which some would want to follow, but some would not want to follow. Because of course, uh, everyone has his, had their own flaws. <clears throat> Including me. Including me. Oh yeah. Instead of just to say, uh, oh, uh, oh, oh my God, I I live I live with my flaws. I mean, I'm so I'm so insecure about my flaws. I mean, I, I'm just gonna get myself a bottle of gin uh, and open up and start drinking it. That's not the, that's not how it's done. It's never been, never will be. But yeah. Let's get back to what let's get back to what we're doing here, but before I venture on off topic even more, to make it seem as if it might be acceptable. But the thing is, these people aren't really bothered. They don't care. What they really want to do is have attention drawn to themselves. They are, in their own way, virtue signaling, saying, "Look at." And hey, at least uh, uh I mean, then again, like a. Uh... I wouldn't really care much if I would be, let's say, ooh, like this or that, but again, it would just matter. I mean, if it was those productive, I would just care to hear people laughing. That would be my main concern. But again, you gotta be careful to the amount of laughter you give a person because there, there was a, a real case of a person who literally laughed so hard until he ran out of air and he died. Yeah, his lungs just uh, locked up. No air could come in or out, and so he hit the ground, stone cold dead. Look at me. <clears throat> I'm going to call out the BBC for being morally bankrupt for producing a satire. No one... Well, then again, like, uh... As, uh... <laughs> I know what I should guess I should have prepared my oh you know what yeah let, let's just open here open office again because this is gonna be this is gonna be quite off quite a good one because uh again like <clears throat> I'm I know I'm 25 years old I mean just just kicking like a just kicking a random can't kicking a random number but man these people they're they really are triggering me I'm gonna just uh, <sighs> Oh, it's not. It's loading. Uh, okay, so it's loading. It's loading here the document. So, <laughs> okay, here we go. So, yep. Welcome to uh, the Apache Open Office. But I'll be using it. I'll be using this from let's say a more comic version about it. Let's say because oh, shit, shit fell. Not 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 surprised. As Isaac Newton once said, shit falls. Well, yeah, then again, I, I got here my keyboard again. And again, uh, I'm so triggered. I'm so triggered. I'm so fucking triggered. Uh, oh. Uh. <laughs> even, it, even with the search item, too. But no. Like, as I said again, I'm so triggered. I'm so triggered. Uh, I am so fucking triggered. Oh my god. The BBC is so morally bankrupt at everything. Oh my fucking god. I'm gonna post it on fucking Tumblr. Uh, uh. <laughs> but yeah, so, again, just to, just so you can see, let's see a bit of a bit of an idea and again I should have caught I should have kept my dead keyboard for this style of humor but uh, hey 
<sighs> but hey, what can I do? But yeah, so... And did you actually notice what's, what's actually the funniest thing of, them, of it all? So, ever since the Cold War, the internet was, most, was mostly designed to be used as a weapon. And the ironic thing is, we have been abusing that weapon. Let's say... This here, the internet. What have we been doing to the internet? We have been screaming at it all the time. We have been, let's say, playing with it all the time. We have been, let's say, drawing on it as well, too. It's not a big surprise at this point. I was being memifying it too as well too, cause why the fucking hell not? <laughs> anyway, let's just pull this fucking thing. I don't give a shit. <clears throat> Discard. But yeah, let's go back to uh, Sargon of uh, Akkad. One who has ever produced a satire has been morally bankrupt on the grounds that they produced satire. In fact, I would absolutely <laughs> say anyone trying to suppress people's ability to produce satire are those who are actually morally bankrupt. And this kind of grandstanding just pisses me off. It's a joke. But yeah, then again, uh, he, he like, <clears throat> but then again, we both said it. This, we both said the same thing. The same, the same, the, those who criticize it and the same, th those who create it, they are both morally bankrupt what a surprise <laughs> or then again put here let's say a rainbow fucking hell fucking hell at indeed at the expense of the most awful people in the world and the idiots who thought they could go and join the most awful people in the world and it would be a good idea this sort <laughs> of shit does need to be exposed it does need to be called out and it does need to be roundly mocked so anyone who even suggests it will simply get laughed at. And that, in the long run, will save lives. But I have to say, to their credit, I have not seen anyone conflating this with an attack on Islam. Well, yeah, but then again, uh, uh, before he said Islam again, I just want to make clear, but this is why I, I love, uh, this is one of the main reasons why I always love dark humor. It saved lives before... It saved more lives than anyone's bullshitty triggered posting on fucking Tumblr and whatnot. Oh hey, what the fucking hell can I do? <laughs> Don't give a shit as usual. Which means they are at least sticking to their assertion that ISIS has nothing to do with Islam. I don't agree with that assertion, but at least they're being consistent. And on the subject of consistency, you really have to hand it to Lily Allen. If yeah, then again, uh, about uh, speaking about consistency as well, that uh, even though dark humor, it, well, like it could be really, really dark humor. It has to be, let's say, a little bit, uh, uh, have a, have, need to have a little bit of, you know, quirks and twerks around just uh, so it could uh, have the laughing effect, you know, just a, a small bit of customization and whatnot. So, so yeah, so it really makes, let's say, people laugh and... Again, say lies, depend on how well it is utilized. So, again, let's be careful on how it's worked and whatnot, and be careful what you bash because some things can are saving more lives than you can actually think of. <laughs> if you're going to be ignorant on almost every subject you talk about, Lily Allen is the very model of consistency. She is one of the most annoying virtue signaling celebrities you will ever see. This week she got into a Twitter spat with Tommy Robinson over sexual assaults and Muslims. And you can imagine that the data simply <coughs> was not on Lily's side. And when it finally came down to the wire, she turned around and said, Only white men have sexually assaulted me. This is possibly the... Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Oh, God. I, I look just batshit stupid with, with my glass like this, but... <laughs> but, yeah. Fuck white people. They're so fucking dorky. But, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this looks really fucking stupid. <laughs> <coughs> okay. 
Let's focus. The most solipsistic thing I've ever seen in my life. From a multi-millionaire pop star who lives in a gated community in Gloucester. Yes, you only are likely to be sexually assaulted by white men because you are surrounded only by white people. <laughs> if you happened to live in Luton or Peterborough or Rotherham, Lily, you might find that the situation might be slightly different. <laughs> and naturally, the author writing in defense of Lily Allen can do nothing but straw man almost everything that is being said. There is something faintly ridiculous about watching a woman say that she's been sexually assaulted by white men and then witnessing a deluge of white men denying that that can possibly be true. Nobody has said this. Nobody is saying that she hasn't been sexually assaulted by white men. It is entirely possible, and I mean, I don't know about Lily Allen's history, but I'm happy to believe her at her word, as I'm sure most other people are. But her response, by the reason she said, only white men have sexually assaulted me, was in response to the idea that other people of other races are capable of sexual assault, and often they do it at a disproportionate rate, which... Well, then again, if... Uh... If she was, she, if she was more, let's say, specific, then who knows? Maybe then. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe some things could have, could most definitely be cleared up. But, but hey. <sighs> well, be specific. Be li well, that's another. That's another lesson we learned. Be specific. It saves lives. Which, as I will show you in a second, are the facts. They say, Alan was clearly trying to make a simple point. White people are just as likely to be sexual predators as their non-white counterparts. Well, I have some bad news for you. That's actually not true. And that's not true by the numbers. In 2016, there are approximately 3 million Muslims in the UK. And we can round off the male population of that to about 1.5 million. This is 5.3% of the male population of England and Wales, which is about 28 million people. According to a Freedom of Information request from the Ministry of Justice from June 2014, the male prison population of England and Wales for all offenders serving immediate custodial sentence for rape was 5,682. Oh, of geez. this, there were 676 offenders who self-declared their religion as Muslim, which uh. is 12% of the total from 5.3% of the overall population. And that's assuming that all of the Muslims in Britain live in England and Wales. Yeah. Yes, these people are being disproportionately represented in rape statistics. Now, it's not as bad as it sounds. It's actually, I honestly thought the figure was going to turn out to be a lot higher. So it's not as bad as it seems. But to say that there is an equal chance is not an accurate thing to say. Of course, it is a politically correct thing to say, which is why they're saying it. And it's worth pointing out that these are the convictions for rape alone. It doesn't include rapists who were simply ignored by the police because they were afraid of being called racist, which is something that Dr. Alexis J's report showed happened constantly. Anyway, back to the apologia. Where Tommy Robinson brought up Muslim grooming gangs and linked... I love that that's uh, just in quotation marks. If that, that isn't really a thing, that's just his crazy right-wing rhetoric. And linked oh. to a video about violent crime and sexual assault with a tweet, anyone wondering what it's like for English people growing up here in, large, in towns with large Muslim communities, then watch here. Alan brought up her own experience as a counterpoint to the idea that it's dark-skinned men that, and their insatiable sexual appetites and uncontrolled violence who threaten the good <laughs> women of the United Kingdom. That's not a counterpoint. It's absolutely not. That's just her saying, yeah, but it didn't happen to me. Okay, that's great. Unfortunately, it's happening to thousands of other girls, Lily. It is. Can you have some compassion for them? Do you care? No, she doesn't. She doesn't. Do you not care? I mean, do you, are you literally trying to say, look, no, no, no. it's okay because it didn't happen no, to me? Fucking hell is Why it? would you even bring that up thinking it's a counterpoint? What kind of selfish, callous motherfucker would think that? But anyway. There it is. <laughs> I'm just honestly in awe. You'd be like, well, look at all these thousands of people who are being raped by Muslim gangs. Like, well, didn't happen to me, though, did it? <laughs> oh, my God, you psycho. Why the, why the fuck would you even think that's an acceptable thing to say? What kind of selfish fucking person must you have to be? Just fucking... Honestly, it's, it's funny because it's just so absurd. Only 
<laughs> you couldn't make up a person like this. And then you go, well, yeah, actually, they're an upper class multimillionaire with a mockney accent trying to be <laughs> going to cater to community from miles away from all these problems. You think, Jesus Christ, I think Lily Allen might actually be the sort of person I might smother to death with a pillow if left alone with her. <laughs> Sometimes in some conversations, it's still oh, necessary wow. to say, yes, white men can be rapists too. No, 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 no. It's never necessary to say that. Unless the conversation was specifically white men never rape and nobody ever says that. Nobody thinks that. Everyone knows that men of all races are capable of raping. That's not the issue. The issue is what levels are they doing it at? And let's be honest, there is a disproportionate level of Muslim rape against white women, or young girls in this case, in Britain. That's reality. You can say that I don't like that, you can say, well, I think that's wrong. You can say, I, this very conversation is making me uncomfortable. But that won't change the reality that there are Muslim gangs who predate on young British girls because they are young British girls. Because they are not Muslims. Now, no one is saying that we need to take Muslims on helicopter flights and throw them out. This is not something that the people... Now, then again, if... Uh... <clears throat> if that actually was a thing, then uh, it would actually be reverting to, let's say, the military dictatorship in Brazil, which happened around the 60s, which, yes, that did happen. Getting helicopter rides just to be thrown off and whatnot. Hooray! But hey, we forgot the parachute. <laughs> oh, man. But then again, like, that's the fun, that's the, uh... Oh, man. It's, 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 it's... it's lovely <laughs> it just feels great you know this feels fantastic okay it's good it feels really really fucking amazing it's hot oh, oh yeah now but uh, apart from apart from let's say doing a bit of repairs and modifications and yada 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 Oh fuck, where, where did I left it? Oh, alright, I know. But yeah, so uh, apart from the thing, me leaving around and say some modifications and whatnot that, uh... You might be wondering what the fucking hell's going on? And to answer your question... Same I say. Same I say. What the living fuck is going on? <laughs> what the living fuck is going on? Because literally... People... They are, they are very demoralized <laughs> at mostly any level that you can think about. Mostly coming up, but whatever not. Especially some, uh, especially again, like uh, the ones who are escaping the war. Some would actually, uh, well, often come to, let's say, European countries for, let's say, to, uh, as a bit of an opportunity, let's say. They see the opportunity to do some bad things, and so they do it. That's the uh, the sad reality of things, but also that's what what generates. I mean, the uh, Islamophobia, I would say. Fortunately, but then sad, but true. Fortunately, sad, and but it's unfortunately true. But hey. We also can't. We also unfortunately can't do a fucking thing about it. So what the fuck are we? Are we? Are we bothered about? So what the fucking hell? No, seriously. Why the? What the fucking hell? Wait, well, yeah, let's get a move on. Let's see. What the hell can? What the hell can this is going to end up at? To, to say that. I mean, just think about this political bullshit. That's just keep on to see clashing all the time. I mean, sometimes, yes, it's fun to, let's say, pick a side and just go out to fight and whatnot just for the heck of it. <laughs> I mean, I can do that anytime given, but I'm just really fucking disappointed. <laughs> Yawn levels. Wait, let's go. People who did not commit these crimes need to be held responsible for. Ever. No one other than feminists want to do that. Do you understand? It's only feminists when they go, oh, it's white men, isn't it? No, you're, you're trying to blame all white men for the crimes of a few, and you think we're trying... Yeah, all white men. <laughs> and suddenly, 
They're gonna switch it. They're well. <laughs> the the you see, the funny thing is about the feminism is this that uh let's say straight you straight white men that of course considering uh, the offense. So for, so the the funny thing is it start, it starts it starts like this. You straight white men. Then they go with the uh, hashtag kill all men. <laughs> that bullshit I bring up again. And they go about, let's say, they kill all straight white men. Boom. There is no more such thing as a straight white man again. And they say, you white men. As an insult. Then like that. Then everyone who has, let's say, a, uh, <laughs> even a, a light, a, a pale tone of, of skin color. Gone, no matter what. Even for the woman who might be white, I don't know what could happen. Do you privilege with men? Privilege treat with men. But yeah, the privilege with the first one to go. But but then again, we also would have, let's say, for the finale, would be just you men. And then the, and then that's where it gets hilarious, because then again, no more men existing. So how the fuck are you gonna keep? Keep, let's say, the uh, biosphere sustained about that. Dr. Heinrich Himmler. <laughs> Bloody hell. Literally, when I mean a brain dead... When, literally, when I mean a brain dead buffoon, I mean it. A little brain dead fucking buffoon. Trying to blame all Muslim men for the crimes of a few. And we're not. Obviously, we're... And of course, again, sorry to pause again, but that is that in a small in a small phrase is the uh, definition of generalization. Because just go around and say like, "Oh, all black men are are drug dealers. Oh, all Muslims are suicide bombers, and so on." I mean, that's just a generalization, which means that it's just bullshitting yourself. Yeah, some attention on that because then again. We should all love each other and whatnot, no matter what, so, boom, there's that. We're fucking not. But because you think it's acceptable to do that towards white men, you think we think it's acceptable to do that towards Muslims. We don't. <laughs> but accepting the reality is important. Accepting what's actually happening is important. And saying, well, <laughs> it just hasn't happened to me Ooh, yet, wow. is not a defence. It's no secret that when the same people who try to justify their racism against refugees and immigrants with the Muslim men are raping our white women narrative are often happy to turn a blind eye when the perpetrators of sexual assault are white men. No, they're not. It's just they don't need to be activists for arresting and locking up white men who sexually assault women because the government has no problem doing that. There are no forces in the British government or any of the subsequent authorities under European their supreme well. authority that are in any way biased in favour of letting white men off of sexual assault. No one is doing that. There is no issue with white men not being arrested because they're white men. If you can believe it, which I'm sure you can't. But that's not something that's happening. And I don't see organised gangs of white men going around and sexually assaulting people. It's just not something that generally happens in Britain by the native population. The incidents that happen appear to be Native. isolated assaults. What the fuck? And they are punished accordingly, as they should be. But when you actually see coordinated efforts to prevent this sort of thing from certain communities that have a history of doing this, such as Cologne on New Year's Eve, SJW-style feminists will say things like, that's racist. And this is actually something that happened. I should have got the thing in advance, and I'm just too fucking lazy. I was talking to crap. Well, at least uh, then again... Uh... <laughs> when I was going, to, when I was going to, going to say, let's say something really, really bad, at least uh, I should have. At least I showed some instant regret. Well, instant regret—that's a key word, which some, which, <clears throat> which I'm sorry, but uh, a lot of people don't have the capacity to do instant regret. Proud to you about this. This is actually something that happened. There wasn't a mass sexual assault and raping on Cologne New Year's Eve 2016 like there was in 2015 because the police basically corralled all of the North African looking men into one area. Oh, wow. And that was decried as racism. 
So what they're effectively saying, as Kraut adequately points out, they are effectively saying these people are rapey and preventing this rape is a form of racism. This is where the progressive narrative is at the moment. And this is amazing. What? Because what they're basically saying is that prevention is not better than cure if prevention involves actual police work on the part of the police, identifying likely perpetrators and preventing it in advance. If the like <laughs> uh... Let it all just, you know, just get a... Mmm, just, you know, just get a, give a good whiff at it. See? <sighs> I mean, just let your brain have a good taste of all this information. And tell me, how, tell me exactly how you feel. Because at this point, I, I most certainly feel violated <laughs> to think about this in this manner. Because fuck me. Likely perpetrators happened to be people of North African origin, for example, in the in the example of oh. then that is a form of racism, and that's unacceptable. Even though we can be quite sure that these gangs of men who arrived at Cologne City Centre on New Year's Eve were were undoubtedly planning a repeat of the previous year. Undoubtedly. Because <sighs> what makes it might what makes you think they wouldn't? Well yeah, that's a funny thing, and again, like you said again. Generalization is a bad thing, and it's not just because, let's say, that a uh, that uh, let's say a certain group of people that every single one of every single of the individuals is gonna be like that. Puh. It's just gonna be just a small group of individuals, but yes, they can't influence others to do that. So that's you know a dangerous thing to be concerned about. Uh, yeah, I would also let's say keep a. Uh, how am I say? Keep, uh, let's say, a clear uh, uh, line of sight, what not. Ah, oh, man. Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes I wonder something. What if, let's say, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably a bad thing to say it out loud, but, but hey, here it goes. But, you know, I've always been wondering something, but... Well, which of course, since I since uh, I've said it, it does mean that exists. So again, I was kind of let's say concerned about that. Uh, what if certain people that uh, how 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 might I say? I guess you're a chocolate. Oh yeah. Then before I eat the chocolate, then as I was as I was to say that. Uh, what if uh, shit. Oh, don't screw yourself. Ah, screw it. Pick it up, gotta put it in the trash can. Oh yeah, so then again, uh... Kind of wondering something, but... What if uh, there was a certain type of, let's say, people... Germany, England, doesn't matter. But what if they were planning to go, let's say, like a... <sighs> Sandy Hooks or Columbine shooting style, I mean... You get you get the point, it's, a bit of, it's dark, I know, but... I kind of wondered, actually. You know, we have all this thing happen, so, of course, we gotta got the toy gun at hand, so, of course, some people who will most likely act out of anger or whatnot, they'll just walk in with a backpack full of ammo, and you just see everyone just go like, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a suspicion that, you know, that could happen, and since it happened, so, at least who knows, maybe people can be more aware of it, maybe it might happen, we never know. Time and space continuum has always been quite a bitch because, to be honest, I prefer to be living in 2010 directly. That's where <laughs> my happy moments were. But well, what can I do? Because so few of them were punished in that as well. Just, it's incredible. These these people want to create victims. That's what they want, and I think they want to create victims. Because it, it furthers their narrative, whether they understand it or not. Whether they even get what they're doing is actually creating damage for other people, it doesn't matter, because it's not happening to them. Only white men have sexually assaulted them, so that's fine. And I'm sorry to spend so much time on this, but this really got in my craw. <laughs> the last time Lily Allen prompted a Twitter storm and a media outcry across the tabloids is when she apologised on behalf of England to a young refugee in the Calais jungle, tearfully telling a 13-year-old boy from Afghanistan that she felt guilty because... The English, in particular, have put you in danger. 
a statement so stupid I'm not going to spend the time refuting it. Our author says it would be absurd, of course, for us to say that white men are any better or worse than any of us. As far as I can tell, that certainly isn't what Alan is trying to imply. When she tweeted this week that people need to realise how the reality of how white males and their attitudes towards our laws continue to threaten our values and communities, while linking news stories about crimes committed by white men, she was clearly parodying the language used by people like Robinson when they talk about British Muslims and refugees from Arab countries. No, she wasn't. She was not parodying anything. It wasn't just a prank, bro. She is actually of this opinion, and unfortunately the statistics do not bear this opinion out. And she doesn't care. Again, it just I'm just annoyed that this is even being given any kind of credence. But of course, there are plenty of apologists in the mainstream media for every fucking progressive thing that she says, regardless of the truth of it. And again, it's white males. Let me, uh... <clears throat> Let me, uh, catch myself here a bit of a breather because... Wow. You know, apart from that scene here in the, uh... That feminist humongous thingy, thingamajigger, whatever it is. I mean, I don't know if, 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 if I'm even saying the right name or whatnot. I mean, I'm just off to the point that I should, that I don't give a fuck anymore. But, uh, I don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, literally. I mean, <laughs> People, they stirred up, let's say, this amount of racist baloney and on, on, and on behalf of England and whatnot, just because of, let's say, saying some bad thing, let's say, uh, let's say, <laughs> let's see, what, how could I, how could I see, let's say, someone here goes with the, with the, with the handgun, like, ooh, well, hand gun like this and go say you there just pass me all your money and then i go here with the real guns like what'd you say to me motherfucker and because it's the type of personality people get oh oh, oh my god I, i'm sorry I, i'm sorry i i didn't mean to i i i'm sorry I, I, i'm sorry but you get but you get you already get the, the main idea fucking hell I mean, no one is even saying it's actually Muslim males. It's some Muslim males. And it's some Muslim males because of the ideology they have in their head. The thing that they believe allows them to do this. It's not all of them. Not all of them believe this. In fact, the majority of them don't believe it. Which is why it's a tiny minority of them that actually do it. But we have to accept that there is a significant minority that is victimizing people based on their race and religion. And they're getting away with it. Oh, let's not forget about one thing that we're kind of neglecting about. Because, yes, I know that there are, let's say, some, uh, well, well, some Arabs who do watch my videos, of course. And there are Arabs who are Christian. And there's no denying on that. Mm-mm, no deny. I mean, there's literally, you can expect anything from the world nowadays. <sighs> Any fucking, anyways. I fuck, screw me. Let's just get a move on. And it's people like this author and Lily Allen who are helping them. They are creating the atmosphere, the political atmosphere, for the police to be afraid of arresting Muslims. This is what these people are doing. This is why they are so pernicious. <laughs> I mean... Me? If I was even, let's say, let's say the president or whatnot, having, let's say, some people, let's say, being afraid of arrest, some people, let's say, let's you know, be some bigot, let's say, oh my god, just, just, yeah, just, let's just, uh, lock his, let's, let's say, his handcuffs, and yeah, go on, just, uh, do your drug trades and, uh, your robberies and everything, and everything will be fine. But no, but, but then again, like, uh, if people really did, some, really did something bad, a crime and whatnot, and they did have to pay for it, they would have to pay for it. I mean, law is law. I mean, it just can go for anyone. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, the... As I was saying again, like, it, it really doesn't... 
every, all of this is just uh, completely necessary because me, if I was the, let's say the, uh, the president, of course we do have all some ex ex uh, some extremism in our side. So, but yeah. So then again, anyone who just say be let's say uh, stopping someone for let's say arresting someone which was caught red-handed that they were robbery, I would honestly have to admit that uh, let's say. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, would feel like boom, right, right in their heads again, just so they could really learn their place and not interfere with police business. Because then again, even if uh, let's say someone who was African American was it was well, of course caught uh, doing, let's say a crime, let's say homicide, if he was oh that's racist or not, boom. It would be even more racist to let him go, and then more black people will be killed. Because then again, and then again, I'm not, I'm not imp generalizing, implying that black people kill black people and so on. I mean, then again, like, uh, keeping people safe. That's the police job. But people just want to, oh, be so police and whatnot that you should follow my rules and my rules only. Because this is democracy, and democracy means power to people, so yes, I do have power over you. And I also, and I also have power over you. Boom. <laughs> well, yeah, let's let's get a move on. The people committing these crimes should be arrested, and the people arresting them should not be afraid of allegations of racism when they do it. I guess this week is going to be a long one because I can't resist from documenting Jeremy Corbyn's. Well, but then again, we also see now that. Uh... Calling out other people for being racist and was and whatnot, we can see that you know uh, other people are using it way too much. And so in case we we have to, let's say, often have to let's say save ourselves from someone who is actually really being racist from someone just pulling out bullshit as pulling out the bullshit excuse of racism. I mean, both are completely different, but one's true, the other's false. How do you believe them? How do you know that which one is true and false? That's the thing. Uh, let's see. It's, it's also come to say with a bit of a, a children's uh, story time. I remember it actually. You know, yeah, I mean, the one that also got to say, like, wolf, wolf, the wolf, the sheep. But then everyone kept running, like, there was no wolf at all whatsoever. But then he, there was actually a wolf. No one believed him. And then the wolf killed all the sheep. Simple as that. <laughs> as simple as that complete failure as the leader of the Labour Party, as support for Jeremy Corbyn to be the next Prime Minister hits new low Ooh. of 14%. And that's in comparison to 47% of the YouGov survey who said they would prefer Theresa May, with 39% saying they don't know. And this is part of a steady decline of Corbyn's ratings, which were 18% in November and 16% in December. And oh, I imagine geez. they're going to be around 12% in February. That's true. Corbyn, you are killing the Labour Party. People <laughs> do not have confidence in you. You should recognise this reality and step down. You are a damaging... Oh, yeah. One second. Interesting, left. Interestingly enough, the same can be said about physics. You know, uh, Half-Life? No, not the game series, Half-Life, but... Half-Life. Uh, which means that... Uh, let's say I have myself here a uh, a bar of uranium. A certain amount of time passes by, then it's, it's down to half. Again, a certain amount of time passes on, it's down to half again. Then it passes on, half, half, and half. Half-Life. But, uh, again, you wouldn't really say that Corbin was literally be half life, but mostly corrosive at this point. Literally corrosive. Because two by two, the poor man's dying <laughs> politically. Element to your own party. That must, you would think you have some duty of care to your own political movement if you are a dead weight around its neck. <laughs> the Labour Party is really struggling. I mean, they're struggling with UKIP and the Lib Dems. And recently, they, they actually managed to claw back a couple of points from the Liberal Democrats. 
but there's absolutely no change in conservative popularity in this country and that's going to continue until you realize you have to get on side with the interests of the working class basically you need to come out in full-throated support of brexit you need to be anti-immigration you need to be anti-eu and you need to be able to understand why there is a left-wing case for these things and i will explain it to you in fucking basic terms right now jeremy right every new now get ready because things are gonna I have a feeling that things are gonna get really interesting new immigrant that comes in damages the financial prospects of the previous one you let in each and every new migrant that enters the country helps suppress the wages of the ones already here that is your case to protect the migrants you must stop further migrants do you understand and that will obviously have a general knock-on effect to the working class of the country as a whole as they are as they are currently being pressed out of the job market by pressure from sheer numbers just market forces are operating supply and demand even a child can understand this you surely can understand this we do not need more migrants in this country well if he if he clearly cannot understand that then it's uh well it's more than medically ethically scientifically spiritually uh and logically proven that Corbin's a cuckold at this point. Sorry, but uh, just like ding dong, the witch is dead, the witch is dead, the witch is dead, ding dong, the witch is dead. <laughs> Which I do have a feeling people will start singing that if, uh, let's say, some political leaders will be defeated. I mean, that's just my that's just my suspicion, but it's just not helping. It's putting adverse pressure on the NHS is putting pressure on all of the public services and when these public services begin to fail that gives the conservatives the mandate they're looking for to privatize them and that's how trump got into power <laughs> i mean come to think about it in a way that uh, not just ex completely now but you know the the main idea of it all i mean how trump got the power that's the main idea <laughs> And again, the funny thing is, they had a chance, they had, but they failed. So, there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, <laughs> <clears throat> and again, there's only one thing I can do about this at this point. I'm sorry, but at this point here, I don't know what the fuck that thing is. There's some random, there's some strange videos been popping up for me recently, and I don't give a shit. Okay, so, uh, let's see. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, one second, so, I mean, the, uh, the origin of this, of this meme here is actually supposed, it's actually, uh, ah, uh, man, uh, the thing is, uh, it's like a bit of let's say, uh, let's say, culturistic. Uh, this uh, you know, this this uh, this this cartoony character over there. It's a bit of let's say a very, very let's say history. I have a let's say a high let's say. It's, it's, come to think about it, it's it's kind of it's kind of a Mickey Mouse from Brazil. It's I know it's like a, it's one of the Mickey Mouse from Brazil. So the main idea of the character is like a he always changes R for L. So. Chola mice will be shot at mice. We to cry more. So, at this point, Je uh, of course, Jeremy Corbyn. Ah, uh, gonna cry more. <laughs> But yeah, then again, <laughs> but yeah, then again, like it's it's a meme. So there's that. You see a, <laughs> about that. But literally at this point, I just can't help it but to say that 
when someone is literally to the point where they're scientifically, medically, spiritually, ethically, and morally proven that they're a cuckold. I'm sorry, but cry more. Your tears were only feed. <laughs> Your tears only makes us happy. Yeah. Oh, wrong video. That gives them an excuse. They're costing the taxpayer money. We should sell them off so they can actually become profitable entities for someone else. You're making this happen by defending mass immigration, Jeremy. By defending open borders, defending the EU, defending your position is hurting the working class and the working class immigrants that have come to this country. You have to stop. <laughs> you will never, you could rob UKIP and the Conservatives of so many of their laissez-faire voters, of the, the people who just are concerned about mass immigration to this country and the damage it's doing to them and their livelihoods. You could win all of them back in a heartbeat by simply changing your minds on this one issue. But you're so ideologically entrenched, you can't possibly do that. And the problem is you, Corbyn. The problem is you and the government apparatus you are fostering around you. The people who you have around you. They are not... I'm sorry, I can't help this, but... Uh... <laughs> Okay, that's good. That's that's cute. Huh? All right, but uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, jeez. Electable, and the idea that back in December you were like, "Yeah, Labour are ready for a snap general election." <laughs> you you are so unbelievably detached from reality, Jeremy. And people are gonna say, "Well, you know, you can't trust the polls," and I agree, you can't trust the polls. You need to look at the polls. Now, then again, I'm sorry, but this, I have, I'll have to, let's say, breach out a new level for this level of humiliation. Cry more meme. <laughs> it's literally... Ah, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Heartless, I know, but I, <laughs> ah, uh... oh, man, in the wider context of what's going on, and Jeremy, you do not have public support. You can go to any comment section, any forum, any Facebook discussion group. Hold on a second, my good friend Sargon, my favorite philosopher, or sociologist. But, uh, at this point, I have a feeling like I should do this. I should do this. And you can see the comments, you can see what people say about you. There will always be some middle class commenters who are like, well, I, I really support Jeremy Corbyn. I, I'm a socialist. I think this is all good. And then you'll see dozens of working class replies of people saying, well, I have to live with mass immigration. I don't like it. Get with the fucking program or you are never going to be elected and you will be the thing that kills the Labour Party. And I'm so annoyed that you are currently destroying the only viable opposition to the Conservatives because I don't agree with anything the Conservatives are doing beyond Brexit. I don't agree with them selling off parts of the NHS. I don't agree with them opening up British land to fracking. They're thinking about clearing parts of Sherwood Forest to frack under it. I don't agree with them censoring the internet, censoring pornography. I don't agree with any of these things, but I can't agree with the EU on a more basic, fundamental, principled level, and that has to come first. Because the EU is more dangerous than me not being allowed to see my porn. So I'm sorry, Jeremy, you have to pull your fucking finger out, and you have to accept that you are the problem here. So the final thing I'm going to talk about is the quote-unquote evidence of Russian hacking of the DNC's emails. We went through the CIA's report in detail on a hangout last night that I did on my other channel, my live stream channel. And I'll leave a link to that. You know, with all this, uh, let's say, Russian hacking and whatnot, 
I do feel the urge to kiss a Russian. <laughs> oh man. I mean, after all with this little unveil and everything with the Russians and <laughs> whatnot. At some point I kinda do feel like a Ah oh, man. What the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> well one can never go, one can never be so wrong. Yeah. About that. And again, I do have to get up early tomorrow in the morning, so... Yeah, maybe by one here should be fine. By one should be fine. I hate doing this, but hey... Fuck. Me. And of course... A chocolate. To let's say help me comfort myself in the little sin I've just violated myself, and of course you might as well just notice over there. Oh look at that Lorax Keemstar, why not? I mean, then again, uh, <laughs> I just want to see how stupid some videos were actually. But hey, more and more I grow bad shit crazy, and that's a good thing. That is a good thing, and I'll claim that. <laughs> in the description so if you'd like to see this in detail you can see why i'm saying what i'm saying now but there are basically three points that you can take away from this that are incontrovertibly true the first one is that no proof has been provided the cia claim that they have high confidence that this is true which is exactly the same thing that they said prior to the iraq war and they refuse outright to provide any evidence to show that this is the case and point two, the claim has originated from the CIA. It hasn't come from anywhere else. It's an anonymous source from the CIA <laughs> who has said this. And they will not give us the evidence. Basically, the CIA are asking you to take them at their word. Which is something I frankly... Now, <clears throat> thing is, this, this is kind of starting to remind me of, let's say, the, uh, the game modes I was creating for myself at Gary's mode. A uh, Gary's mod. You know, I'll play that game, uh, Gary's mod, mostly around, let's see, weekends and whatnot. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be definitely to play those. Now, thing is, if people do really, let's say, want to claim this and whatnot just because this or that, sometimes the only reason that I would, that I would fall for that if would be that, uh, unfortunately, that, uh, I would just would would just be in need for some drama, need for some entertainment and whatnot. Because hey, if drama is what keeps YouTube alive in whatever platforming site it can happens on, then what the fucking hell am I supposed to be bothered about? Literally, what the fucking hell am I supposed to be uh, let's say be too angry about? Let's say if they're gonna start up some drama, then might as well. Well, drama, which you know, it's just fake. So, uh. You know that that one meme with the guy, he's like, uh, hold on a sec. I can't do this since my headphone has no wire. So that's that's a good side about this. So imagine he meet, imagine my gun's here the chair. This is gonna be good. Boom. Uh, ah, I just sit any other on the chair, but but hey, that, but that's that's you know sometimes how I feel when uh when things are starting to get uh hmm could be a good term. Oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez. Well, we're going to be very edgy, or very salty, if you know what I'm saying. And then, even as well, these 45-year-old men and whatnot, they, even at politics, they're at the same level as many, many people I know from art sites and whatever, and whatever other uh, the social medias. Everyone is at, a, at that level of edge, or saltiness will never do because I have read about the CIA and I simply do not trust them and then we come to the third point which is the this gonna be good the way that this is being presented in the press other intelligence agencies confirm a campaign of influence took place but Ooh. not that Russian hackers are responsible and the way that the press is portraying this in a very lazy reductionist way is that other agencies agree that the Russians hacked the DNC. This is not 
what they're saying, but this is how the press is misrepresenting it. And again, I strongly advise that you take a look at the live stream or even go through the thing yourself to see. It's a 13-page document, only five pages of which are actually dedicated to establishing that the Russians did it. And that's done on the basis that they say, we think the Russians did it. There is a concerted effort to try and conflate the idea of Russian propaganda also being the same as Russian hacking. This campaign... I'm sorry, but I ha but it has to be done. It has to be done. Please, sir, can you cry? Can you cry me more? Or wow, wow, cry me a river. <laughs> Pain of influence is based on Russia Today, the Russian state media outlet, and paid Russian trolls on the internet who are paid to put pro-Russian propaganda out onto message boards and whatnot. Now, these things are not illegal, they are not hacking, and they are exactly the same as what the Hillary Clinton campaign did. So there is absolutely no grounds on which to say what they did was wrong, unless you're also going to say what Hillary did was wrong. And even then, I don't think it is. Everyone is entitled to put out whatever propaganda they want, whatever kind of worldview they want people to agree with, Everyone is entitled to do this. This is insidious. This attempt to conflate the Russians voicing their opinion as being an illegitimate means of influencing the election. Well, I'm sorry, I do recall Barack Obama coming over to Britain and saying something like, oh, what was it? Brexit's a bad idea. You should stay in the EU. If Britain leaves the EU, they will be back of the queue. Arr, you fucking hypocrites. But not only that, a CNN commentator accused Julian Assange of being a pedophile, which- Ooh, like I said again, you might come in with my rifle, I said it on the ground and this gonna be good. WikiLeaks are, of course, threatening to sue them over if they don't retract the statement, <laughs> which of course they did. I mean, this guy actually called him and he said this as if it was nothing. Literally, pre- <clears throat> Please, sir, can you cry? Can you cry some more, or cry more? <laughs> I have to do this. I have to do a this. A pedophile who lives in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. By Wednesday, CNN had removed clips of Mud's comments from the show's Twitter account and tweeted a correction. An analyst on our air earlier today asserted that Julian Assange was a pedophile and regrets saying it. In fact, CNN has no evidence to support that assertion. We regret the error. Well, I fucking bet you do. Honestly, this goddamn fake news epidemic that is coming from the mainstream media is intolerable. At every turn, they're being outed as liars, and they just won't stop lying. I just can't understand it. Just, just tell the truth. Tell the fucking truth. Well. And the funny thing is, is exactly how they all just stopped as well too. But yeah, then again, uh, if he knows how to gun of a, if you know, let's say, tell me when to watch Sargon of a cat. I mean, he he, he he does, of course, provide some very mind blowing content and whatnot. But but hey, uh, you have here. I mean, you can just you just literally just subs just subscribe to him, watch his videos. You'll be satisfied. You'll be happy. I guarantee you. Finito. But yeah, uh, I guess it's time for me to uh, just uh, let's say put away my stuff and uh, and come up with a uh, with wh whatever. <sighs> Fuck it! I think I already got myself a a nice uh, thumbnail a thumbnail for all this. So yeah, then again, I hope you enjoyed as much as much as I did. And I look forward to the next one. I'll see you next time. And until then, now who the fucking hell was it? I know. I said it was a great step. I was going to end this one here, but uh, I'm sorry. I can't help myself at this point. So, uh, again, let me get. Let me just get myself with a little P rifle, and so we. Uh, <laughs> so you watch yourselves here to react with the original meme, because hey, apparently this one is a good one. VFX and hot coffee presents. Yeah, this hot coffee, cafe coffee, Kenji, hot. A turma da Monica, Monica's gang, 
Odono da Lua, the uh, owner of the moon. Oh. oh, look at that. Oh, <laughs> I mean, if you do some research in those characters, I'm pretty sure uh, <clears throat> you'll uh, you'll see you'll be quite entertained. That is, if you like them. Pra que fazer curso de karatê? Não vai me dizer que é pra derrotar a Mônica. Duvido que você vai conseguir derrotar a Mônica, ainda mais com esse curso de karatê por correspondência aí. Como você adivinhou que esse curso com o Tio pode derrotar a Mônica? Agora que ele é baixinha, <risos> tem tu, chegou o Duxa e baiou. Yeah, then again, they're always, let's say, arguing between a. <coughs> Well, between their rival, <laughs> the uh, let's say because of uh, uh, if if uh, if you if uh, let's see, I'm not gonna spoil too much, but sometimes it's always the same plot that you know that uh, me as a kid, <laughs> I I always watched this shit uh, when I was a kid because there was nothing better to watch. But hey, the apparently was was funny. I mean, same joke and whatnot, but in different ways, which were funny at the time. But well, those were 1990s. And so on, but hey, let's see what else he got. Você vai ver que é bom pra tu. Cascão, eu tô treinando o karate aqui já faz três meses. Todo dia depois da aula eu treino aqui no campinho. Agora a Mônica tá filhada. Vou dar uma chulha nela. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, this is not the original version as well too. That's just pointed that out and... You know, that that's his uh his uh, best friend slash rival. <laughs> Nossa cebolinha, olha a Mônica vindo aí. Oi galera, pela cara de vocês parece que estão armando alguma coisa contra mim. Mon. And then again, I, we do. I might as well notice so that the uh, the 3D animation might be shit and whatnot, but the movements for some reason they're so Hyper realistic, it's disturbing, but yet, yet, yet it's funny. Nika, o Cebolinha falou que você é gorda, balofa, dentuça, e ainda por cima ele disse que vai quebrar isso aí que você chama de cara. Quem é balofa, gorda e dentuça, Cebolinha? Vai ver o que é bom pra tosse. Uh. I... Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! But yeah, even though let's say that it w it might have been let's say cheaply made and whatnot, but but hey, but hey, <laughs> boom! But yeah, that I mean I have to say that at least that was quite hilarious. Ooh. And so, he had his victory over his rival, which you know that over more, over more than 20 years, 20, <laughs> well over 20 years actually, because you know, the red, when the red dress always kept defeating him all the time and whatnot, so. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm the new one. I'm the new one. I'm the new one. I'm the new one. Yeah, that's uh, how the uh, how the meme goes. De repente, me deu uma dor de barriga, cebolinha. What the fuck is going on? Cebolinha, pensa rápido. Boom. Quem mandou mexer comigo, Cebolinha? Você levou uma coelhada porque você mereceu. E da próxima wow. vez vai dar coisa na sua vó. Seu 
Ô, Dulce, o Dulce, o baixinho, vem pro pau, vem, vem, vem. Ah, eu te quebro a cara, seu... É, Mônica, agora literalmente o Cebolinha é o dono da lua. <risos> É, Cascão. Well, then. Agora o Cebolinha é realmente o dono da lua. And that's not Africa. <risos> Wait, is that Australia? Oi, galera. Espero que vocês tenham gostado do vídeo. Dê joinha okay. e se inscreva no canal. Tchau. Oh, there Tchau. Tchau. You see, you have here the, uh, the voice actors here. Of the, uh, the characters. So, yeah, you have, you have the names so you can uh, look up if you're ever interested and whatnot. <clears throat> Video is not commercial. It was made just for fun. The, st the story of this uh, was made in production uh, VFX and hot coffee. Well, 3D model and whatnot. So yeah. Uh, but yeah. So then again, also since we're since this point here, we're also going to memes and whatnot. So I guess it's time for me to introduce you to quite a little, to quite a little bit of experience. Now. Uh, <laughs> I think you might as well know the channel of this guy here because let's uh, remove kebab. I mean, it's not it's not too funny, not too famous, but hey, I guess we can always revive at some point. I admit that I don't know what I'm doing. His uh, profile picture is a little bit outdated, I know, but hey. This is the guy here who always makes, let's say, well, to be, let's say, a good starting point of, well, Brazilian YouTube poop, as one would say, because, well, it's a good starting point to, let's say, to see and about, and, and as you can see here, we have, we are, we are already at a good, <laughs> at a, already at a good, uh, at a good start, because for one, up here we have Legend of Zelda, a very old cartoon. We have a uh, Sonic <laughs> reference. We also have Undertale. We have a meme here reference. Another one, uh, Mega Man. Uh, Pokemon. What else we got? Oh, of course, <laughs> I can never Donkey Kong. Can never forget about those. But yeah, let's go about this one here, just so you can, so just you can have a bit of idea. Of how it works, and I'm pretty sure you that if you're those who produce some YouTube poops, then this should be quite interesting for you to study upon the creativity and go insane. -ish. <laughs> Let's just stop because I'm because I'm, start, I'm starting to get dizzy. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you already get yourself the uh, a bit of a a small taste of what it is. Now I must end this one here for the time being because I need to sleep. I need, I'm gonna need to get up early tomorrow morning and. Uh... <laughs> I'll see you. I'll see you next time, and until then. So, so yeah, see ya.